NFL Mailbag Time, and it's presented by Manscaped. Father's Day. If you missed it, it's okay. We got you covered. Go to manscaped.com slash chat where you guys can save 20% off and get free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. So we're going to be doing some questions. This is from our live audience during our live show on Wednesday. and We go live every single Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time and 1 p.m. Pacific. So, Cole, you're first up here, my dude. Is it known for a fact if Reed even said anything negative to Le'Veon Bell, what the comment was, Send like sour grapes. So it seems like sour grapes. Anything Le'Veon Bell says, I don't really care. The only valuable thing that Bell has said in the last two years is when he had that random police call where two girls stole something, and that absolutely had me dying. So besides that, Le'Veon Bell hasn't contributed anything to the NFL the last two years. All right, we got gaming and blogs. Talk about the Texans. They're located in Houston. They used to be the Oilers. Is that good? No. I, I don't know what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson. It really starts there. They have like 20 different types of running backs. I think Mark Ingram is going to be the main player. But like at this point, you're talking about the probably the worst team in the National Football League. Definitely the worst run organization. You could even make the argument the worst run organization in all of sports. That's how I feel about Houston right now. And I really don't think that's that crazy to say. And if you like Houston, if you're from Houston, sorry. Y'all got a problem. Let's go to Cheater. All right, three-team trade. Denver gets Aaron Rodgers and a six from the Texans. Packers get Watson and a first and a second from Denver. Texans get Locke or Teddy and a 2021, 2022, and 2023 first to the Texans. Oh, boy. Here's the issue. I'm super dyslexic, and I can't gather all this information at one time. So if you have a trade idea like this, the easiest way for me to actually sit down and give it some thought is to message me on Instagram at MitchellRens365. But Aaron Rodgers to the Texans. Wait, Denver gets Aaron Rodgers and a six from the Texans. You guys are just all over the place here. Let's go to Anytime X. No idea if this is right. Robert and DJ, do you think he make an impact on Seattle? Okay, well... So the one thing that I don't like about NDJ is like him coming out of high school, I believe he was the number one recruit, was going to go to Ole Miss, and like he had all the tools in the possible, like had all the tools, yet is kind of lazy and has yet to live up to the hype. And I get that he was a former first or first, no, yeah, first round pick by Arizona. Didn't really quite work out. Could he make an impact on Seattle? Sure, they definitely need more depth on that defensive line. It never really hurts, but like, that's probably not the route I personally would go, but who knows? I mean, I know that he's been linked to a few different teams out there. All right, so what I want you guys to do right now is sub to Chat Sports for NFL news, rumors, and live shows. If you're looking for mailbags as well, you are in the right place. Help us get to 250,000 subscribers. It's youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Pumping out news, rumors, literally everything you guys could possibly want. And if you guys could... It helps us out a lot here. I mean, we're a free show. So believe it or not, subs, they mean a lot. Andrew Gonzalez, I think your caps are on. Top five toughest divisions in football next year. I mean, the top two toughest are NFC West. And then I'm probably going to go out there and say AFC North. You got to throw in the AFC West as well, simply because they got the Chiefs in there. Maybe the South and, and the NFC because you got Tom Brady and then... Uh, I'm not going to the NFC East is probably the worst division in football. How about the AFC East? You got New England, who could be a lot better. Miami was a 10-win team. Buffalo was a 13-win team. Those are the top five divisions in the league. But number one is probably the NFC West. Number two, I'm going to say the AFC North. Let's go to James Sneed. Field starts week four. If you're asking me, uh, apparently – he has absolutely no chance to start week one, but uh, if you would actually know the actual quote, it's from Harrison Graham. He did a pretty cool show out on our Bears Now channel. If you don't know already, please go check it out, youtube.com slash Bears Now. But if I was the Bears, I would start him week one. And maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but Andy Dalton, I know what he is. He stinks. Nick Foles, he stinks even more. Why not rock and roll with your young rookie who you drafted in round one, who you traded up for? I want to see Justin Fields. I don't want to see the Red Rifle, and I don't want to see big you-know-what, Nick. Let's go to Seth Griffin. Will the Saints sigh a veteran good corner like Brian Poole? Will they do it? I'm actually not 100% sure. 
I will give New Orleans a lot of credit for being able to sign their rookies and keeping under the cap because if you want to talk about a team being an absolute cap hell, it was the Saints. And if you're a Saints fan, Seth, go check out our channel. It's brand new, chatsports.com slash Saints TV. But if you're looking for a nickel, this is, I mean, this is Brian Boyle. He's been a top 15 nickel cornerback over the last three years on a horrific team. He finished last season on the IR, 44 tackles, two picks, seven pass breakups. But I'm actually shocked that he is still out there on the free agent market. But for whatever reason, cornerback has been a difficult position to be able to wrap your mind around because of the fact that Sherman's still out there, Stephen Nelson, Brian Poole. There's a lot of talented dudes still out there. But if uh, if he won, won a big-time contract and they could figure out a way to make it work, I think he'd be a great fit on just about any single team. If you're trying to be a great fit, you know what I'm talking about. Head on over to manscaped.com. Use promo code CHAT. 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. The perfect package just got an upgrade. You can now get the Lawn Mower 4.0 in the perfect package. What comes along in that? You get the ball toner, the ball deodorant. I don't know about you, it was 90 degrees on my walk to work today in Dallas, Texas. Luckily, I don't smell around the office. I don't smell like the garbage like when I walked into the studio today. But if you want to be able to hail, well, if you want to be able to shave your downstairs I'm telling you, the Lawnmower 4.0 is an absolute game changer. You can use it in the shower. It's got a long battery life. Plus, you actually don't even need to plug it in to recharge. It is a wireless charger. Like, it's just next level good. The boxers, they're free. Plus, you get a traveling case, which they call the shed. That is free included in the perfect package. Usually, $109.99. But we're going to shave down those prices to $87.99 thanks to our sponsor, Manscaped. Don't miss out on this awesome opportunity. We know there's a lot of dads out there. We know there's a lot of guys that watch our show. Take care of your downstairs. It's manscaped.com. Make sure you use promo code chat. All right, we got Preston Champagne. Who do you think will be the worst team in the NFL this year? If they don't have Deshaun Watson, it's going to be the Houston Texans. If Aaron Rodgers sticks with Green Bay and if Houston has Deshaun Watson... I'm probably going to throw out the New York Jets to be a potential contender, and I still might throw out the Houston Texans. We got Thomas Humber. Von Miller seems confident in Drew Locke. Where do you have him ranked in the NFL? What about Teddy B also? Thanks. So Von Miller's quote of them basically being like, oh, we got Drew Locke, we're good, we don't need Aaron Rodgers. What else is he supposed to say? I mean, he's supposed to have his quarterbacks back. In terms of where do I have Drew Locke ranked, I think the last time I did my quarterback rankings, he was number like 25 out of the 32 possible starters. Teddy Bridgewater is probably like 27. I mean, either option, not great for Denver. And it's frustrating because when you look at a complete team, offense, defense, the Broncos are ready to win now. Somebody just needs to go ahead and tell their quarterbacks that. But who do y'all think is the better QB out of the two people here for Denver? I want you to type DL for Drew Locke, or I want you to type TB for Teddy Bridgewater. If you're trying to keep it on the DL, it's all good, I understand. But Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, who's the better quarterback? Who's the best quarterback for the Broncos? What up, Zeno? Sam is amazing. Now that I'm done sucking up, does Dak win comeback player of the year? See, if you suck up to Sam, who knows? Maybe you'll go ahead and uh, get on the show. What do we have? Does Dak win Comeback Player of the Year? I, I personally think so. The last time I did a show, I talked about Comeback Player of the Year odds. Dak Prescott had the best odds at plus 180. I believe the second best was Saquon Barkley at plus 500. Christian McCaffrey plus 600. Plus 800, I don't – actually, it was Nick Bosa. And then Julio Jones was plus 1,200. So, I, it's going to be Dak. I mean, if he can stay healthy, if he can throw for over 4,500 yards, if he can throw for 30 touchdowns, he's the quarterback of the Cowboys, he'll win it. All right, we got Mark Jones. Titans going to dominate the NFL this year. King Henry, AJ, Julio, etc. tighten up. This is a very popular team, and this was a team that I talked about months ago saying, hey, don't be surprised if they are a dark horse. And now with Julio, I'm 100% agreeing with you. This team is uh, really talented. Mark, if you're a Titans fan, it looks like you are. Chatsports.com slash Titans TV. It's our Titans only channel. Let's go to Thomas Angel. Who do you think will start at quarterback for the Saints, Winston or Hill? So what I want you to do is type W for Winston or type H for Hill. I'll tell you what, I might have to get a lawnmower 4.0 on my freaking mustache. It keeps tickling my nose right now, driving me nuts. I'm going to type my W for Winston. Taysom, to me, is not a quarterback. He's a fun player. You can insert him into the lineup here and there. But, like, 
I think it's got to be Jameis. And if Jameis can just limit the turnovers, we've seen him have solid ability. The last time he started, over 5,000 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, and sure, he's had 30 interceptions, which is going to happen here or there. But what I want you guys to do, go down in the comments section right now and try to predict who is going to go ahead and be the week one starter for the New Orleans Saints. If you think it's going to be famous Jameis type W, if you think it's going to be Taysom Hill type H, I'm going to go ahead and type my W for Winston. But I will also say this, really, really going to miss Drew Brees repping that number nine jersey. If there was one player that I looked up to probably the most when I was a kid, it's probably Drew Brees. We got Mark. Does Cousins finally get the Vikings to the playoffs in 2021? Is Aaron Rodgers the starting quarterback of the Green Bay Packers? If he is, the answer is no. If he's not, then he definitely has a lot better chance. But I just can't sit here honestly, Mark, and look at you, a guy that I respect, and say that I have confidence in Kirk Cousins. Because if I did, I'd be lying. We got Bakersfield guy, 661. Should Atlanta bring back Laquan Treadwell? Oh, man. Laquan Treadwell. If you were to ask me what uh, a lot of people, I think, thought DK Metcalf was going to be, people probably thought it was going to be Laquan Treadwell. I'm not interested in him. I understand that he spent some time last season with Atlanta on the practice squad. He's a big, tall receiver, has never been able to live up to the hype. So for Atlanta, I get that you just lost Julio Jones, but the answer is not Laquan Treadwell. We've already seen it happen, play out in Atlanta. We've seen it on a whole bunch of other teams. My answer to that is no. Now, if I missed your question here on today's show, I'm sorry. You can go ahead and blame Sam. And, but if you want to go ahead and ask a question uh, on my Instagram, it's at MitchellRens365. If you want to go ahead and yell at Sam on Twitter, he's at SamBrownCS. If you want to go ahead and give him a follow, uh, I, like I said before, I'm just the guy on here talking. The guy who has all the power to push graphics up on screen to be able to show your questions, it's this guy down below. So go ahead and give him a follow on Twitter at SamBrownCS. Levanta Rogers, appreciate the super chat. Bears record with Aaron Rodgers gone. Uh, I'll say 10 and 7. I, I think the defense is ready to obviously be a top 10 defense. It's the offense. I mean, you have a great receiver in Allen Robinson, probably one of the most underappreciated receivers, players even in the league. But if you start, if you start Justin Fields, you know, I think that you do have a better chance of winning more games right away. However, if Justin Fields comes on the field, that also probably means Andy Dalton has really been stinking it up. But I'm going to say 10-7 and seven with Aaron Rodgers gone. If Rodgers is there, you could probably look at another 9-8 and eight type of year, maybe 8-9. and nine. Let's go to Matteo. If you were Dave Gettleman, I'm glad I'm not, would you trade for Aaron Rodgers? Would it make us contenders? Would it? I wouldn't want to trade away our future for Rodgers, but I wouldn't mind Rodgers in the Big Apple. Two problems with that. Giants, I'm sure you know, they don't play in the Big Apple. Um, if I was Dave Gettleman, would I trade for Rodgers? If you had the opportunity to go out and get the NFL MVP, you 100% do it. In terms of giving up your future, I hope you're not talking about Danny Dimes because I'd give up a dime to get rid of him because I don't think he's very good whatsoever. But they have a good offense. They have Kenny Galladay. they got a lot of other solid pieces. Evan Ingram in there. But uh, if you had the opportunity to get Rodgers, you got to go ahead and do it. What up, Thomas? Who of the five rookie quarterbacks – who were drafted in the first round has the highest bust potential. Oh boy. Um, there's a part of me, I mean, Trevor Lawrence I think is pretty safe. I'm also going to say Justin Fields is pretty safe as well, even though the, the Bears have done an absolute terrible job. I mean, I'm probably going to go with Zach Wilson. It's not because I don't have confidence in Zach Wilson. It's because Sam Darnold ended up busting. The Jets don't have a lot of talent around him. He's going to have to play in a big market, especially from somebody coming from a conservative school like BYU. You go to a big-time market like the New York Jets, Zach Wilson looks like he's 13 years old, so I guess I'm going to go with him. We got red zone highlights. Who will win NFL MVP this upcoming season? The the shitty answer is probably Patrick Mahomes. Uh so, yeah, I'm going to give you the guy who I think honestly has the best chance to end up winning NFL MVP. It, it's Patrick Mahomes. A, a dark horse sleeper again, I'll say, is Dak Prescott because the dude was on pace for over 6,000 passing yards. If the Cowboys win that division, if he throws for over 5,000 yards and 35 touchdowns, don't be surprised if Dak gets a few votes himself. Let's go Lil Eden, Richard Sherman of the Titans, or Zach Ertz. If you're asking me which player do I think is more likely to go to Tennessee, I'll say Zach Ertz. Kyle Wedgworth, what are your two teams 
excuse me, that you think will make the Super Bowl and who will win it. Ooh, okay. I'm uh if you want to go like chalk as chalky as it gets, I'll probably go with the Kansas City Chiefs out of the AFC. And out of the NFC, oh boy. There's a part of me that don't I, I don't want to say the Rams, but that defense is definitely super legit. The Super Bowl that I want to see, like the Super Bowl that I'm really hoping ends up happening. If uh, obviously I'd love to see the Raiders, but from a realistic standpoint, the Buffalo Bills out of the AFC with Josh Allen, I think that would be really fun and entertaining. And then also I'll throw out a team like the Arizona Cardinals. I would love to see those two teams. We got Robert Henry Ruggs will break out big time and be the Raiders version of Tesla S Plaid zero to sixty and one point nine nine. I hope you're right that Henry Ruggs does end up breaking out. But if you're looking for an NFL comp, maybe it's a Cliff Branch. Go ahead, do your homework. 